Well, ice tools are undeniably cool. They can distract the new ice climber from their footwork. Today, we talk about beginning our ice climbing journey by learning the proper way to set our feet. Hello, I'm Jason. The last few weeks, I've had the joy of exposing a few different new ice climbers to this world of water ice. This is awesome! For my kids, part of the draw to ice climbing is certainly the tools. They're awesome! <laughs> but like all climbing, ice climbing actually starts with footwork. You don't pull your way up a climb with your arms, you push your way up with your feet. That's why, despite my kids having axes that were short enough for them to use as tools, my kids couldn't get on vertical ice until we could get them in crampons with front points. Oh, and if you want more information on the difference between axes and tools, check out my video on how to choose the right ice axe for you. As you get more advanced in your climbing, you can certainly learn more advanced footwork, but today we will ensure that you have the foundational foot movements dialed in. First, what makes a good foot placement on ice? While there are certainly times you can find a good calf rest on a ledge, just like rock climbing, the more typical foothold involves kicking the front points of your crampons into the ice. But then what sets the placement as solid is the secondary points engaging with the ice. It's the combination of the front points and secondary points then that create stability. Now it's time to think about biomechanics. To get the secondary points to engage, we need our heels to be lower than perpendicular to the ice. You need to drop your heels as you kick in. To get used to these foot placements, I start new climbers by climbing without tools while on top rope. On slick ice, while your hands can help you balance, they can't grab anything with enough force to support your weight. That means as you take each step up, for a moment, you are supported by only one foot. This reality forces you to quickly learn the difference between a solid kick that can support all of your weight versus a marginal foot. You will find that the trick to moving up without tools is A, taking very short steps, and B, shifting your hips and your weight over the standing leg before moving the free foot. The kick style changes some once we add in tools. Next week, we'll talk about swinging tools, what makes a good tool placement, the full sequence of movements, and more. But for this week, as far as it relates to moving your feet, you want to hang off your tool, which allows you to sag your hips back. By moving your hips away from the ice, you create room for your kicks. Bring your upper legs up at the hips, which allows you to now kick from the knees, again with the toes in and the heels down, so that the front points and secondary points all engage. Kick in one foot, then while staying in your hang, make the kick with the second foot. With two good feet, you are now ready to stand. And unlike climbing without tools, which keeps your feet relatively narrow and close together, now you want to widen your feet to make a wide base from which to swing. You need the stability for the somewhat violent upper body movement that's coming. And that's the fundamentals to good kicks into ice. I hope this helps you feel more confident when moving up on frozen water. Next week, we'll be going into swing mechanics and combining the lower body and upper body sequences of ice climbing. Thanks for coming to the end of this video. Please hit that like button and you can really help us out by ringing that bell and subscribing. Check out our website at shortguysbetaworks.com to find gear lists, all of our videos and additional thoughts and information. Have you been out climbing on ice? Is it something that you would consider trying? Please let us know in the comments. See you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.